All right, by popular demand, um, seems like a lot of people ask me how to how to how to build one of these little dozers here. And so what I'm going to do is basically walk step by step on how I did it. Um, I'm going to get down into the weeds and get into the details on. Um, a lot of people when they build these models, they have some high tech uh, cutting tools. Uh, milling machines, drill presses, etc. But uh, what I have here is just basic hand tools. Uh, and I had to go buy a welder and this is just a, a a 90 amp flux wire welder and I bought this at Harbor Freight for right at about a hundred bucks. Uh, one thing you want to do when you buy these, they come with wire. The wire sucks. So just go to Lowe's or Home Depot or somewhere and get you some better wire. The tool that I used the most was probably just a jigsaw and using uh, just a metal cutting blades. Had to do a lot of cutting on some of the bigger angle iron pieces. Um, the sheet metal you could just cut it with 10 snips. And I, I got these at Harbor Freight as well. It's like two, two bucks or something like that. The next tool is a drill. You're going to need a drill for quite a few holes and a lot of screwing. The next tool I used with quite a bit was the Dermal tool. This was a simple little one, nothing fancy. Um, I used these cutoff wheels quite a, quite a bit. I'm not sure how many I went through, but it was packages of them. Um, you really got to be careful with these little things. They, they tend to shatter if they get bound up and they'll go flying. So make sure you always wear your safety. Of course, you got to use tape measure to measure your pieces. And use a square to make sure that your pieces that you do cut are square. Um, that's one of the biggest things to make sure that you do get right is making sure all your pieces are 90 degrees to each other. Um, if it's off a little bit, things are going to end up falling out of place and the more you get out of, out of um, alignment, the, the worse it's going to be for you. Of course, use just a couple little, little wrenches here and there, um, not too many. A little bit of electrical work that you're going to have to do. And I use just a regular metal shaving file um, quite a bit to, just to clean up some of the work I did. I also got one of these. I don't even know what you can call it, but basically it's for putting flanges on metal. I believe that's what, what you call it. But I've used this quite a few to make some nice little bends. Um, very simple to do. Basically, just you know, you got to fit wherever you want your mark at. Just load that in there. there let's say we just say we want to put a bend right there, and just press it against something, and it'll bend it for you. So that's that's how I did a lot of the bigger pieces. All right, all the steel, most of the body work, um, the pieces that I bought was all from Home Depot. This is just regular sheet steel. Um, what is this? This is a 24 by 24 inch sheet, and I think it's like thickness is um, probably like one thirty second or maybe one sixteenth. Doesn't need to be too too thick. Um, it's just for body work, so. Um, this material here is a gutter material. You may recognize it on the dozer for the grill here. Um, I bought a lot of this square tube type stuff. I think these, um, these pieces come in like, um, 18, 24 inches. You're going to need quite a few of these. I can't tell you how many you need. Um, I just went, you know, try to figure out when I built it was piece by piece. 
um, I went and bought it as I needed it. So I'd get a couple sticks here, a couple sticks there to build it. I also bought some little, I guess you'd call it an L-shaped 90 degree. Um, and this comes in different lengths as well. You're gonna cut a bunch of these little pieces here. This is how I attach my track to, to the track pads. And these pieces here, this was flat bar. And um, it came in different various lengths as well. It's a little bit thicker. I think it's probably about eight, you know, what is that, about an eighth inch thick. It's about an inch and a quarter. I think, yeah, about an inch and a quarter wide. The actual pad itself is one inch, and the upriser portion is about a quarter inch. One of the other most important things when you do this is to have something to reference off of. Um, I actually went and bought one of these, just it was plastic. That, it's cheap already. The rubber tracks already melted off the damn thing. But um, basically, you know, you look at that and try to figure it out. Okay, how how do I want mine to look? So, you know, you could reference pieces. So a couple hours later, I got it all broke down. Then um, I'm talk to you next video on how to build this frame right here. <coughs> and the dimensions and um, continue on with all the rest of the pieces and kind of show you how I did it and I'll give you the locations on the internet where I bought everything or at the hardware store where I got it so hope it'll help you in your build